By the start of the new millennium, the decade of radical change was over. A world that not so long ago had looked to socialism, central planning, and protectionism, now looked to the market. It's breathtaking what's happened in the last 20 years or less. It's as though the whole world has changed its mind. Everywhere, in India, China, Asia, in Latin America, in Europe, in North America, and above all in the communist world, governments have retreated from the commanding heights of the economy. Having thrown off communism, the countries of Eastern Europe continued to embrace free markets. Poland has flourished. What's driving Poland are two million small businesses, almost all started after economic reform. Of all the cases of shock therapy around the world, that in Poland worked uh, just about the best. It really got the economy going. Businesses like Zofia Belgique's gym now employ over half of the country's workforce and produce close to 75% of its total output. After 1990, lots of companies and foreign firms appeared in Poland. The forecasts were very good, and I think they have come true. But we Poles need time for everything to fall into place. In Latin America, the result of reform has been mixed. Chile continues to set the pace. A democracy, it follows free market policies and is one of the world's seven fastest growing economies. The first democratic president after Pinochet uh, maintained the reforms and also tried to improve on them. It's not something of the right wing or the left wing parties. It's simply some economic policies. Now, to learn that took some time. Bolivia is still poor, but it has been growing. Many people would say, well, we're still poor. I would say to them, Bolivia, before we stabilized the economy, was a poor country with hyperinflation. Bolivia, after we stabilized the economy, is a poor country with stability. I think there is some disillusionment in Latin America that they have had uh, problems despite the reforms. Getting to a steady high rate of growth is a difficult thing and it certainly requires more than sorting out your inflation problem. And now we see a sort of financial collapse in Argentina. For several years, Argentina looked like the poster boy for economic reform. But it turned out that the reforms were quite incomplete. The country ran up huge international debts. In 2002, it had an economic meltdown. At the end of the day, the strains were too much. And now we see a great deal of political turmoil, raising all kinds of questions for the future. In India, Narayan Murthy no longer needs 50 trips to Delhi for permission to import one computer. Instead, he has built one of the world's biggest software companies. India's economy has loosened up, and it is growing. Well, it did work. I think certainly it did work. Uh, and what is interesting is that uh, it, all the parties that criticized the party that introduced reforms are now taking forward those, those reforms. So I think 91 to 2000 has shown that the economic liberalization which started out of compulsion has ended up being a process that is being driven by conviction. All this has brought about a sea change. In fact, nobody in India today who would question the correctness of the decision to open up India's economy. Even the communists grudgingly can see that this is the right path now. In Russia, ironically, 
The 1998 stock market crash and the default on debts may have been a turning point. A second chance for Russia's still new market economy. Under President Putin, the institutions of a market economy strengthened and the oligarchs were reined in. Russia has changed a lot since the loans for shares deal of the mid-90s. It's had strong economic growth over the last several years. Companies have modernized, and a lot of the reform legislation that should have been done five or six or seven years ago has finally been enacted. I remain cautiously optimistic. But even if Russia gets out of this mess, even if democracy survives, even if all market reforms take root, and all of that is possible, the 1990s was so costly unnecessarily that uh, I'll never be able to look at it uh, and feel that, gee, it all ended up well in the end. The problems are still there, the problems of inadequate health care, all the way to corruption, but it's a, it's a society that's, that's changing. President Putin sees Russia's future as being part of the world economy. I'm looking at my son who is 19 years old and I'm looking at other people and I'm amazed. They are ready to live in this global environment. These are the people absolutely free of any old stereotypes. They don't remember communism. My son is coming home and asking me, Mom, can you tell me what Marxism is? We spent only 10 years after collapse of communism, and my son doesn't know what communism and Marxism is. The world had indeed changed its mind. Capitalism was now the rule almost everywhere. The stage was set for a single global marketplace, woven together by trade, technology, and investment. The era of globalization had begun. Watch all of Commanding Heights online at pbs.org. This enhanced netcast links to an interactive time map, country reports, economic data, and important full-length interviews about the future world economy. Commanding Heights video set and book are available from WGBH Boston Video. To place an order, please call 1-800-255-9424.